so most Monday mornings, or most mornings, I have a meeting with like a team on, like my meetings are usually all online, which is kind of nice. But um, anyways, today's plan, we're going to go over the goodie bag that we got from the track meet, but I also wanted to talk about how I did at the meet and all that kind of fun stuff. I finally got the video, sorry the lighting was bad, I finally got the video from the meet, so I'll be able to like kind of go through. We're going to take some time, me being my internal coach and kind of coaching myself right now, we're going to go through what I saw in my jab throw, um, multiple attempts or just the one of my good attempts. It was by far my best series, so I threw over 185 feet almost every single time and then had my big throw of 61.80, which is 202 feet, 9 inches. So I was pretty pumped about that, pretty stoked. It was my first time over 200, my second time over 60, um, which are starting to get into the big boy numbers. I feel like if you can throw over 200 feet, you're considered a good jab thrower. So I consider myself a good jab thrower now, which is kind of cool. Okay, so I'm back at the house, and it's after the chiropractor. I feel a little bit better. Back's a little bit looser, still a little sore, but that's what you get throwing jab. Um, we're going to go into my... PR javelin throw and we're only going to break down that one because I don't really have a ton of time to break down all of them and I think it would be kind of boring just to look at not so good throws but for some reason this one went 202 feet that's pretty sick um, I don't know how it wasn't the greatest throw and you guys will see that but um, yeah so uh, let's get into it check out this sweet jersey Okay, let's get into this slow-mo. So slow-mo is a little bit closer, a little bit shorter. So you're really just going to see me driving off my left and then going into my block, okay? So we walk into it. This will be my drive. So I'm driving off my right. Okay, so we're going to stop it right here. So if you look right here, I wish that this arm wasn't this high. I wish that it was a little bit lower and a little bit flatter. But what are you going to do? And then inch it forward a little bit further. And we get to my arm actually going up even higher now, which I still don't like. The javelin's a little bit angled incorrectly. Sorry for that drawing. It's a little bit angled incorrectly. I wish that it were to be a little bit flatter, but what are you going to do? I was also throwing into a headwind, so I didn't want to throw high, and that's kind of why I wanted it a little bit flatter. Um, so we'll inch it forward a little bit further. I plant and take a really, really long <clears throat> step with my left, excuse me, for my block, which I'm not a huge fan of, but in this case it turns out to be okay. My arm is still way too high, and now the javelin's at an even more extreme angle. It is pretty, pretty steep, when it really should be something more like this, if that makes any sense. So one thing I did well is I didn't really lose my tip, so it still stayed in relative relation to my head, but it could have been just a little bit better. Um, and I do drop my arm a lot, and my arm is bent. Like, it's not perfectly flat. I wish that it was a flat pole and that it was well, but obviously you can see that there is that big bend there in my arm. So in javelin, you're supposed to turn off your right foot, like you really crank that thing. And as you can tell, mine is being pushed off of because you can't even see the outside of my shoe. So I was hoping that I would have had this a little bit more externally rotated and that it was twisted and that I wasn't like pushing off of it. But this plant leg, you'll see right now it looks pretty fine. Like it's pretty straight and my heels dug in and I'm really yanking on it and my block isn't bad right now it's in a decent position so I wish my leg doesn't collapse and you'll see that it does collapse and that I wish my foot was a little bit more turned out and I wish my block stayed higher and I didn't collapse on top of it because we'll step it forward a little bit and you'll see my leg starts to collapse a little bit it stays pretty strong but it still is pretty bent and I wish that it was in a straighter line but it's not my left arm is really 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 low and doesn't is like if you could see through my body, maybe making an L, which is fine. I just wish that it would have stayed a little bit higher. And I actually pulled 
over my shoulder pretty well, which is kind of not how I usually throw jab. I'm not very good at actually throwing over the top. Usually I kind of sidearm it and rely on my elbow, which isn't necessarily the best thing. So my foot is still not externally rotated, which isn't great. And my hip actually clears all the way through, even though my foot isn't rotated. I still finish over the top, but now you can see where my block kind of fails me. So like I said, my block is on the other side of my body and is like this. And I wish that it was a little bit higher and was maybe up here because it's causing my body to collapse. And so when it collapses, I'm now in a position like this rather than being in a position where I'm long and tall. And I can actually like use my leverage, me being like a pretty long torso and pretty long arms to pull on the javelin and allow it to come all the way through. Anyways, this is the block and I do kind of finish over the top of myself pretty well. So as you can still see, block is very, very low, not great. And my knee is very, very bent, not great. And this foot is doing nothing, not great. So we'll step it forward a little bit further. I was throwing, I don't remember what the, it's a steel jab, so it's a little bit softer than those carbon ones, and you can really see it like wobble, 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 wobble. It wobbles like crazy in the air, which I think looks pretty cool, but I technically think that it slows it down. But it's the javelin weighs exactly, like exactly 800 grams, precisely what it's supposed to weigh, which is perfect. And it was actually the first time I'd thrown that jab, and I loved it. Okay, so sorry, back to doo -doo 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 -doo, back to the throw. So you can see I really collapse on my left side, not great, but I do finish over the top and it allows me to finish over the top. Um, I gave myself plenty of room on the finish, so I actually follow all the way through. Okay, so this is one thing that I feel like a lot of javelin throwers or younger javelin throwers don't do, is they don't follow all the way through their throw. They kind of just think that it's supposed to be a block and they block and then it doesn't go anywhere. But if you watch me, my eyes are kind of fixated on the jab and my body is in a position that it followed the jab. I wish my arm here would have stayed a little bit higher and kind of chased the javelin out that way because then I, would have been, I wouldn't have been pulling down on my left side. But what are you gonna do? It was a decent throw. Um, but I do, we'll go through it a little bit further. I do finish over the top really well. So like my block is still in the same position that it was. My body is still up and everything is still relatively straight. And so when the javelin flies out, it flies out without like losing the tip or I'm not pulling down on it. I kind of finish all the way through the javelin, which is a good thing. And then I left myself plenty of room here. So like I have from here all the way to up here to stop myself. So the line I believe, if you can kind of see it, is right there. And so I use almost all that real estate to stop myself. I really do. So I stopped. My block was here again and I stop halfway through this little line and then I continue to brace on this leg so that I don't foul and I don't let this leg come all the way through because if this leg comes all the way through then I most likely foul and I lose my best throw. Yeah, it was a great day to throw. I had a little bit of a headwind so that's not a bad thing. Um, it actually allowed me to kind of drive through it a little bit more rather than having to like kind of toss it up and let the wind take it. Um, but we'll fast forward a little bit to where she starts to flip the numbers, so we'll, we'll watch over here. This was the throw before me, and you'll watch this little leaderboard thingy, and then she'll flip it to 202.9. I'm right now telling these guys, so I'm over here, and I'm telling these guys, I think that they said 51, and 51 is a decent throw, and that's kind of what I expected to throw, is like 51. And so, she's like, I don't know what she's doing over here. I'm like, I think I threw like 51, I don't know. And then the coach comes over, or is saying something, and he's like, no, you threw in the middle, like there's an O that's painted on the turf or on the grass. And if you throw into the O, you throw over 60. He's like, no, your jab's in the middle of the O. Like you threw, you threw over 60 meters. And I was like, no, there's no way. He's like, yes way. I'm still talking with him like, there's no way that happened. And then they flip it around and Jackson goes nuts. Johnny's clapping. Coach Witsit's pumped. I'm ecstatic. I have no idea how that actually happened. Um, anyways, it was a sick meet. So <laughs> there you go. He gets excited. I'm pretty excited. Lifetime best. Okay, so that was what 
I kind of thought of my javelin throw. That's how I kind of approached it and that's how I reviewed it. And that's how I usually break down all of my events. I go back and I look at all the film that I recorded for that day, whether it be for the vlog or whether it used to be for the vlog or that kind of thing. And I break down it into each section and so I can kind of see where I went wrong and how I can improve. And that's why I felt like it was such an asset for me to have the vlog during my career because it allowed me to kind of coach myself or learn from and be able to coach myself when I'm out there competing and not all the time are you going to be out there competing and your coach is going to be able to right, be right next to you and tell you all these things. He's going to be able to give you like little things here and there, but realistically, you got to be able to feel those positions. You got to be able to make those adjustments and being able to record stuff and go through it like that really is a helpful way. But we are now going to go through what the track team gave its alumni at this meet. So I'm just going to kind of lay it out on the bed here and show you guys. So we got this goodie bag, of course, Nike. Um, we're gonna go from the top stuff, and it's all unpacked, like still packaged because I haven't undone anything yet. So we got a sweet Nike, like Oregon hat. So it's got the duck on it, it's yellow, it's sick. It's probably gonna be one of my most worn hats now because that's just. I don't know, I always wear hats and I never, we never got an Oregon one. Except for the like dope Oregon one with those one jerseys. Um, next, we got a pair of sick basketball shorts. They're like the new kind of athletic, fun, or, like cool band style stuff. And they have like little slits on the sides and are real fancy and real pretty. So those are the, we got a pair of cool shorts that we got. So I'm pretty stoked about that. And then the kind of motto for this year is um, fly in formation. Meaning like, hey, do your work, do your part of the, your part of the deal. Um, we are a team, fly in formation, like be part of that. Uh, it has the same kind of commitment stuff that we talked about and Tougher Together. So oddly enough, I'm wearing the Tougher Together sweet t-shirt, Tougher Together. And it has the same kind of like motto on the back or like things to live by and things that you're promising that you're gonna do for your teammates, which I think is very important. And then the last, or not last thing, but one of the last things is a pretty cool duck sweatshirt. It's super thick and super heavy. It's really nice. I'm sure you guys have already seen it in other people's gear videos or something like that or just on Instagram but obviously we didn't get this stuff because we're alumni and then the other thing so within this box is a pair of shoes that are very important um, it, they kind of go overlooked and you never really like think how much you're gonna need them until you actually need them so you would expect like Oh, they're alumni, we're gonna treat them well, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, we're gonna get them some custom Jordans or something like that. When in reality, like, how often am I gonna wear those Jordans? Almost never. Um, I still haven't worn any of the Jordans that I've gotten, actually. Uh, they're all still just sitting up in my closet. But, instead of giving us Jordans like that or something, they just gave us a pair of trainers. Um, it's gonna sound weird, like they're the Zoom Elite Nines. They're a super comfortable lightweight trainer that I can mix between a racing flat and a, a cross trainer or like a Pegasus. And the reason that I think it's cool that they did that for us, that they gave us those style of shoes, is because it's something that one, I've, I never had to buy for the last four years and I still haven't got, had to buy them because they we got a ton of them and I just, I'm wearing my old ones into the ground. I probably shouldn't be wearing them. Any, anyways, it's a shoe that goes overlooked and I can't say thank you enough to the equipment people for giving us like all this gear. Like I say all this gear, but this gear, it's like, it's super important for you to have like fresh trainers. And they assume that you're an alumni when you come to the meet, that you're still competing, that you're still active, that you're still doing things. And so to give us a pair of shoes like this is a lot different than giving us a pair of shoes that we're probably not gonna wear. And these are actually like applicable to our everyday life. So I really appreciate you guys doing that for us. Um, it was super cool, super nice. And like people might say like, oh, I don't know why they gave us just regular trainers, but 
to me, somebody that doesn't want to go buy trainers but doesn't have a contract or anything with another company, it's sweet to be able to just have a fresh pair of trainers that I know that I can wear at some point. So thank you guys so much. Um, Oregon Equipment, Coach Johnson, Jill, all you guys hooked it up. I really appreciate it. Stephanie, you're doing great work. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's going to be the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You guys got to see what we got as an alumni competing for the University of Oregon. And I had a question saying, like, why are you still competing? You're done with college. And I'm still competing because I love track and field and it's just fun for me. So I'm not competing for the University of Oregon. I'm not competing for anybody but myself. Um, yeah, that's going to be it. I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown of the jab. It was a PR for me. I was pretty stoked. I didn't really care how I finished. I finished like fourth or something, but it didn't matter to me because I threw a personal best. And you can't ask somebody to do better than their best or at least give their best effort. So remember, be nice to people. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt others. Slow down. Don't dance so fast. And I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow. I think we're going to break down the Pac-12 decathlon and see how that went for everybody. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, bye. Thank you.